running out of ideas for thumbnails. Hi guys, I'm Amy. Welcome back to my channel. I have a, another reading wrap up for all of you. So to make up for the fact that I didn't read throughout the first three weeks or so of September, I've read six books. One is a graphic novel. Another is a very, very short little beginning reader, not quite middle grade type read. So a couple quick ones, but I do have some novels in here and they pretty much range all over the place which is always exciting and always makes me very happy to read as broadly as possible. But if you guys are interested to see the books that I have read in the last uh, week and a half or so, then go ahead and keep on watching. We will start with the children's book and that is The Princess Test by Gail Carson Levine. I just recently hauled this in my birthday book haul. I'll link that up here for you guys if you're interested in checking out my uh, newest additions to my library. Uh, most of you will know Gail Carson Gail Carson Levine as the author of Ella Enchanted. I remember reading these as a child and this is a retelling of The Princess and the Pea and I gotta be honest I didn't really like it. Uh, there are parts of this book that require the girls to be certain sizes to even be eligible to take the princess test to marry the prince and the main character is very finicky and particular which is part of the point with The Princess and the Pea but I just... I didn't love it. I do have three more from this series to read still that I don't remember reading, so I'm hoping I'll like those more, but this one was kind of a bit of a meh, especially as far as I was hoping for some nostalgia with this one and just didn't get it. The next book I'm going to share is a classic that was a buddy read with Robert from Barter Hordes. This was the first time we did a buddy read together and I enjoyed it immensely and we read Jane Austen's Emma. And in this book we follow Emma who's 21 years old and of the upper class. She's not a lady but she is, um, her father's a gentleman. She lost her mother years and years and years prior, doesn't really have many memories of her. And we kick off this book with Emma having successfully paired and played matchmaker between her governess, Miss Taylor, and a local gentleman. I don't remember his name exactly right now. That's kind of bothering me, but that's okay. It's not important. And this is about Emma continuing to attempt to play matchmaker with the people in her lives and how very unsuccessful it pretty much all of them are, except that first one. And this book has a huge commentary on class and what it means to be a part of high society versus the working class and how they interact and who gets to marry who and who gets to move up in society but who doesn't. And I found that aspect of this book very fascinating, but Emma's not likable. She's very spoiled and self-entitled and thinks she knows everything about the world. And there are very, very few people in her life that actually tell her, Emma, you don't have it all figured out, except for one particular character, my favorite character in this book, Mr. Knightley. And that's essentially the plot of this book. It gets a little long in the middle for me. This is definitely of the four awesomes that I have read, my least favorite. Like I said, the end of this book is stronger than the beginning, but I actually don't feel like I will be picking this book up to reread it anytime soon. Other Austins? Absolutely. This one, I don't really have the desire. This book did inspire, to some degree, the, 19, or the 90s movie Clueless, which I was a young girl in the 90s, so naturally I've watched it far too many times, and I did really enjoy seeing aspects of that movie in this book, and that was fun, but it just didn't have the wit and scathing commentary on society that Austin usually has that I wanted as much. Like, it just, it didn't have as much of the Austin that I wanted in it. But regardless, it is an Austin. It's still decent, but like I said, not my fave. I have also read a very, very popular book at the moment, especially here on booktube. And well, I'll, okay, we'll show you what it is and then we'll chat about it. And that is There There by Tommy Orange. This is, if you don't know, a own voices story about Native Americans living in Oakland and preparing themselves for the Oakland powwow. And there are a huge variety of different characters, all ages, genders, abilities, etc, etc. There are so many perspectives in this book and in some ways that's the good thing about this book but in other ways I think that's also a fault. I didn't love this book. 
I am very disappointed to say that because I know so many people have enjoyed this book so much, but I found this book to be very, very demonstrative of a debut novel. At times I feel like this book is underwritten. In other characters and points of view, I feel like it's overwritten because between the characters we switch point of view, tense, whether or not the story is in the current timeline or a past timeline and it's hard to piece them all together and in a lot of ways it makes it feel very disjointed because what Orange is attempting to accomplish is the fact that there's no one type of Native American. There are all different perspectives and people and experiences within that classification and I did enjoy that part because there are people who don't look Native American but are and there are people who are Native American but and look it but don't necessarily identify as part of that. Males, females with varying experiences within the Native American community and I just think it was too much. I think he attempted too much and I feel like too many things were left just undone and I also feel that in many cases the connections that were made in between these individual characters weren't necessary and so they felt very contrived which was very disappointing to me and overall I just I didn't love it. I feel like this book has been overhyped. I did enjoy the own vice voices aspect of it. I liked hearing about this urban Indian and the different perspectives within this community of people and these different experiences, but I don't find the execution to have been very successful. I know I'm in the minority on this, but there you have it, guys. I read a popular current book that was published this year and it just, it didn't, it didn't work for me for a variety of reasons, but it's not without its merits. I would love to know your thoughts for sure. If you have read it, please let's chat about it down below because there is just so much in my brain about this book, just so much. And the second to last book I'm going to chat with you guys about is a book that I am still processing that I'm really not sure how I feel about it because there's just, I've had varying reactions and responses to different aspects of this book. And that is The Dinner List by Rebecca, Rebecca Serrell. This book, we follow Sabrina, who shows up to her birthday dinner with her best friend in which all the people that she put on this list when she was in high school, when, or excuse me, college, when her friend, Jessica, who's at this dinner with her, says, if you could invite any five people to dinner, dead or alive, who would they be? And they're all there. So Audrey Hepburn is at this dinner, her estranged father, uh, her ex-boyfriend, and a college professor, and then her best friend, Jessica. And it's about their dinner that they have. So the current main storyline is over the course of one night, several hours, in which they have dinner. And then you get these flashbacks about Jessica's interactions, largely with her boyfriend, Tobias. And what this book is about is about relationships and the fact that they're messy and they're not clean and they're not always perfect. And it's about the different opinions and ideas and thoughts that people have about relationships and what a relationship should be and what it shouldn't be. And I really, really did enjoy this discussion on what a relationship is and the fact that they're not clean cut. They're not always pretty and oftentimes they're not. And you have these big, great highlight real memories with some people, but then there's the little things that fall in between the cracks that really aren't so great. So I really enjoyed that part of it, but I did at times get sick of the relationship between Tobias and Sabrina. I found it to be exhausting and exasperating in many ways. And But on the other hand, I loved all of the chapters in which they, all these people are at dinner and interacting. My favorite character by far is Conrad, her philosophy professor from college. I found him to be fascinating and the perfect facilitator for this dinner, this very magical realism type of dinner. And this book took me in places I didn't expect it to. And I bawled at the end of it, which I was not anticipating because up until that point, I wasn't sure whether or not I was even enjoying it or liking it, let alone had enough of an emotional connection to some of these characters to actually cry. But this is another one, and this happens to me frequently, in which I've spent more time away from it, I've liked it more, and I've enjoyed it more. And 
I kind of want to go back and read it again. I interacted with this a lot as far as annotating and writing notes and marking passages. And again, I would really like to chat with you guys about this book if you've read it because I've heard some mixed reactions, reviews about this book. And I did enjoy Sarah's writing and would like to read more from her. So it, it was an interesting experience, a very, very quick read. I definitely recommend checking it out because it's just something I haven't read before and I enjoyed that aspect of it a lot, but still, like I said, some mixed reactions while I was reading it. And the last book I have to share with you and my favorite of this bunch with out a doubt is the graphic novel here by Richard McGuire. This book is stunning. So the premise of this book is that you are looking at one specific ge geographical location throughout all of time. You go to way, way past, like pre-human dinosaurs to even in the future, this hypothetical future. And so you get these snippets of, so this is taking place in 1999, and this is taking place in 1775, but then you see in 1936, this is happening. So this is in one physical spot and the illustrations are gorgeous. And I thought I would like this book. I had high hopes for it, but I didn't anticipate there being such a strong narrative within a book that just has so minimal words. Essentially what this book is discussing and presenting in such a successful way is the fact that things don't live forever. We are constantly changing and evolving and things end and new things begin. And he, Maguire so successfully accomplished this and got this point across that we are not forever. Our current way of life is not forever. Just like the Native Americans who lived in that spot, their life was not forever. Or the people who lived in the manor house or the dinosaurs who live there. There is a beginning and an end to everything. And there's these interesting tidbits in the end of this future world that just really drove that idea home. And I just, uh, I loved it so much. I also love that, the, at least from what I could tell, as the closer we got to the future, or present day, the pictures were more distinct and uh, the shading and such was a lot, was uh, harsher and more direct. Whereas in the past, it was almost through this like film, this haze, because all this time has passed. And then the future snippets that we saw, it's this is ethereal, whimsical, airy type feel because it's not determined yet. I think this book is gorgeous. I loved, loved, loved this book. If you haven't read it, go read it you will not be disappointed. It, it astounded me. I read it in a single sitting and I think that's the best way to read it. I think that really just gives you that whole experience in where we've started as humankind slash just the world and this physical spot and how things change. And it's just, I don't think that was very comprehensive or cohesive, but hopefully you got the idea that I just adored this and you need to read it because it's stunning. The artwork is beautiful. The concept is so clever and original and you will not be disappointed at all. All right, guys, so I lied. That was not the last book I have to share with you guys because I totally forgot about an ebook that I read this month that is or has been one of my most anticipated releases of this year. And that is My Plain Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This is the second book in the, oh, the Janies series. I can't remember the name exactly. I apologize. I will mark it up here for you guys. And this is a retelling of Jane Eyre in which there are ghosts and mediums and supernatural happenings and it was fun. It was very, very fun. I do have to say I did not love this book as much as I loved My Lady Jane, which was the first in the series, but there still is this wit and fun aspect to this book. I almost read this book in a single sitting, and there are some really awesome, very well-placed pop culture references that have nothing to do with the time and place that Jane Eyre does take place. But we have three main characters whose point of views we get. We get Jane Eyre's point of view, Charlotte Bronte's point of view, and a gentleman named Alexander, I believe, who gets mixed up with Charlotte and Jane. And it was fun. 
it was a good, enjoyable, quick, YA, simple read, which was exactly what I needed because I think I read this book after I finished Emma and was just feeling kind of meh about it. So again, I didn't absolutely love it, but I liked it. And once it comes out in paperback, I will add it to my shelves. But if you're interested in kind of just a fun, spooky-ish retelling that involves ghosts and adventures, then definitely check it out. It's it's a quick read, like I said. Okay, now there you have it. All of the books that I have read recently. If you guys have read any of them, please let me know all of your thoughts, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, we're just neutral about the book because sometimes I think that's worse than not liking a book. Or if you're now interested in reading any of them now that I have talked about them, whether or not I didn't like it, which makes you want to read it because I've had that happen before or because I loved it. Again, let me know all of it, all of it down below in the comments. But if you guys like this video, please like it. And if you loved it, please subscribe and we'll see you in my next video. Happy reading. I forgot one. I forgot to talk about a book because I read it on ebook and it's not in front of me.